there, everybody. I'm Ross Pitt, Shard Cutter. Here with me, as always, is Wizzy Puff. He's not lying this time. Welcome to Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour. Now, Wizzy over here is a hardcore atheist. He just He's hates lying. everything religion. He can't oh my God. stand that thing. I'm going to have to uh, correct Ross on a little something. What? It's you I can't stand. What? Excuse me. I'm the one who makes the fun of others. Not you. You can't. You're not the one who does that. Guys. It's not making fun when it's based on truth. Oh boy, guys, he's That's not true at all. Wait, what? Guys, he's re learning how to retaliate. Help! Send help, <laughs> please. The only way I can keep up my army of slaves is if I crush their will to revolt. <laughs> yeah. Probably Ross said that. I mean, I did say that, but it wasn't like in that tone. It was <laughs> more happy when I said it. Uh, anyways, today we are reading a fan fiction that many would probably scoff at. Two fan fictions that many would probably scoff at, actually. Fluttershy Has Tea with Jesus, and its sequel, Rarity Has Tea with Jesus, by Retsamore. Retsamore? Ratsamore. It's, it's a pun on that's amore. I have no clue. Beats me. Um... According to the chapter, right under the chapter title, it says by Rets with a little cat smiley fit. What do we call that? Colon three. All right. With a little colon three right there. Um, but yeah, I have read this when I was like 12 years old. I remember enjoying it. He's totally going to spoil it for me, guys. Do 707 thumbs up. Lie. And only 32 downvotes. That's pretty good. All right, I think I'm going to start then. All right, I guess you should. Oh, uh, go, one. go, 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 stop right there. If you want, I would strongly recommend to go down into the description and read these two stories on your own before listening to us or read them while listening to us. But if you don't want to do that, say no more. Just go down into the description and give them a like. All right. They deserve it. That's the one thing I will ever request of you guys. All right. Chapter one. Tea. Jesus has tea with Fluttershy by Retz. Colon three. To say that it was a beautiful day in Equestria was a lot like saying Fluttershy was good with animals. Birds were chirping in a controlled panic, as if each shrill peep would be its last while flowers gently rolled in the wind like they strived to be stalks of wheat. Silly amounts of woodland creatures scurried about, much like woodland creatures generally do, and each bore an unsettling smile on its face. At least, it would look unsettling in any other setting, but here in Equestria, it was a fairly a common occurrence, much like breathing if you went around asking ponies. To the ever-free forest groaned and slowly sunk its millennia-old body across the landscape, its very heart beating only once per year. What the frick? What? What the frick? Is it alive? Is the ever-free forest alive? Okay, so fun fact about the little ever-free forest thing over here. Originally, it was going to be something that was like... It was going to be like a looming threat that was ever-expanding. Um, oh my god. They sort of did that eventually in like season like nine. Um but it it never really reached like its full potential. Huh. But um yeah, technically I guess could be considered alive because all forests are alive. You've seen you've seen the yeah. swamp. Avatar the Last Airbender. Okay, but that's another piece of fiction. Exactly. And all fiction comes from the same source, which is the Bible. Let's read on. 
It is commonly thought that the Ursa Major is the largest sentient being in existence. Oh, I don't even know what that is. So the Ursa Major is a big old bear. It it looks like uh, uh. this like the like the stars. It's got like a starry pattern on it. You know, like the constellations Ursa Major and Ursa Minor. Makes sense. Um, and it's got a little baby bear called the Ursa Minor, which could easily step on any living creature in Equestria. Oh, God. So, yeah, the uh, Ursa Major is huge, and they never actually confront it because it's a peaceful Aww. being, I guess. And it was only really mentioned in the first season, episode six, ah. to be precise. Wow. Bit of a something that big and it's only mentioned once. Yeah. If uh if you want like um a a more threatening creature, go to go to dragons. Those guys are much better developed or whatever. But those in the know happen to be very aware that the assumption was false. The Everfree was a massive turtle of a creature reaching its flippers around the world in its never-ending mission. Oh, so it's a huh. lot like Avatar, huh? Well, look at that. Giant turtle forest. Yep. Stupid lion turtle thing. I hate that guy. What? What? He was He's all so like, oh, I'm so big. I hate it. It was. <laughs> no thing should be that big. Which only it knew of. Its focus, as it had been for decades, was turning towards a spot upon itself that had been rudely chopping it into bits with tiny tools. It had yet to realize it, but a small town had taken up residence around where its right kidney should have been. On the very edge of that town was a cottage, which contained one of the four beings that had figured out that the Everfree was more of a creature than a forest. One lived near its spleen, and other two atop a mountain. Her name was Fluttershy. It will, and it will take the, other, the Everfree more than a century to receive the news that she is currently having tea with a pleasant stranger who had shown up at her door. On any other day, she might have denied such a request and hidden under the couch for an hour, but today she was feeling rather peculiar, almost perhaps brave. I'm confused. Why would she have hidden under a couch if someone comes to her door? She's very shy. And scared of everything. This wow. is like season I thought she was, uh... one and two Fluttershy, where she's even more scared of everything. Wow. Does she get more brave after the whole Discord thing or something? Somewhat, yeah. Okay. I just thought she was more... Uh friendly and quiet than she was just like absolutely socially anxious well whenever she sees like a new creature or whatever she would be like wag and get out of there mm. no or uh, so yeah. she's like mm. so she's more sociable with animals than uh people i guess yeah so that's how it be for fluttershy at least seasons one and two fluttershy she gets better unless it's halloween in which case she doesn't <laughs> get better she gets pranked right at her cottage. No, it... because people know better. Yeah, no one would do that to someone as precious as her. No. She would have a heart attack right there on the spot. If one were to be granted the knowledge, they would see that this was predetermined. She would be brave, and it did not matter why she had come to that decision, decision because it was predetermined and the fates didn't need a reason. Wait, is this Jesus or Greek mythology? Read on. Unfortunately, it had been originally scheduled for next Tuesday, when a tornado was destined to rip through town and she would be tasked with saving several families. The fates had left their, in their intern in charge while they went off to their book club meeting. So are the fates like an actual thing in My Little Pony? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Huh. Like a whole, a whole bunch of mythologies are just pickpocketed for this show. Hmm. So it came to pass that Fluttershy would be sitting on a soft pillow made of a fine royal purple, laced with golden strands that some beautiful maiden must sorely miss. 
Opposite her, on a similar but far more burdened pillow, was a well-built man in a white robe. What skin she could see was tanned and muscular. <laughs> Mus muscle Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Calloused from years of hard work. It wasn't what he looked like that mattered. It was the fact that he was there in the first place. There being Equestria, and, generally, within part of an improbability curve. The mysterious being took a light drink of tea, a fine herbal brown that had scented the backyard with whatever flavor it was. Fluttershy coughed nervously, something that every intelligent being, whether it is physically capable or not, does at some point in its life. Oh my god, the Everfree Forest coughed and everyone died! The end. Yeah! At the man gazing thoughtfully over his raised teacup. For a moment, she stared at him with an open-mouthed expression of awe, only closing it at the sound of porcelain colliding with wood. Her concentration shattered. She blinked and looked at the newcomer as if she had only just noticed him. I... I... um... She started, lower lip quivering to the point where if it weren't attached to her face, it would have jumped off and run for its life. So, Mr. Jesus... You may just call me Jesus, child. What question did you have for me? The man responded, resting his thick hands on his lap. Beneath his beard was a smile so soft the pillow under, under, the pillow under him felt a twinge of envy. Uh, okay, um, Jesus, I was just wondering, what are you? She asked. He raised a bushy eyebrow, taking another methodical swallow of tea. He lowered it to the table with perfect, perfect practiced gaze. Grace. Yeah. He lowered it to the table with perfect practiced grace, and opened his mouth to speak. Fluttershy took a quick swig, if only to not seem rude in front of a guest. Physically, man. Oh yeah, he's all man. <laughs> he answered. He answered plainly eyes flickering to a couple of birds as they raced each other overhead with murderous gleams in their eyes. Christ. You know, not, not, not talking about Jesus here, just saying. Christ, those birds have murderous gaze, gleams in their eyes. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. He's right here. He'd be fine with it. Uh-huh. Sure. Well, Jesus would be fine with it. Jesus is cool. He is. Your home is lovely. Do you enjoy yourself here? I have known to dislike. I have known many to dislike such seclusion. Oh, yes. I love it here. All the sounds, all of the beautiful birdies and the animals to keep me company. And it's not that far from town. Where are you from? Immaterial. He answered. A short silence slipped in, looked around, then slunk away. That's a pretty name, said Fluttershy, looking up as a cloud over floated overhead. Jesus followed her gaze, and his soft smile seemed to grow even larger and softer, the laws of physics and logic bending to accommodate it. It's very peaceful here. That's another reason I like it. She continued. Such peace gives you time to meditate on life. And it's many wonders, does it not? He asked, eyes seamlessly looking where she was. Above, the cloud seemed to get the message, and slowly morphed into the vague shape of a butterfly, which was to say, exactly like a butterfly. Clouds in Equestria were fickle things, and ones from the Everfree seemed to be the only ones that understood their own capabilities. I guess so. I don't think peace needs a lot of meditation to be, um... Understood. You're just supposed to enjoy it, I think. That's a good way of putting it, said Jesus. An awkward silence peered through a crack in the door, slipping in when it thought the two weren't looking, and promptly sat on their heads. Only the occasional sip of tea interrupted the awkward silence, but this one was smart and smothered the noise with itself as soon as it died off. A bird landed next to Fluttershy, and the two took a moment to smile at it. A few meters away, obscured by the tree, a flower bloomed. A chicken clucked. This tea is well made, 
said Fluttershy's companion, setting down a now empty cup. A robed arm reached over to the heavily decorated neon pink teapot. A nervous cough and yellow hoof interrupted him. The cough coming from Fluttershy, not the hoof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allow me, please, and um, thank you. It's a recipe that my mother used to make when it was raining outside, and I don't exactly make it as well as she did. She trailed off, letting the gentle flowing of the tea do the talking for her. She leaned back in her seat, stopping halfway to look at a different neon pink item. Um, would you like any sugar? No, thank you, Fluttershy. How do you know my name? You, you told me. Did she? I mean, did not in this one, that? but I imagine when they started, she, she probably did. Or maybe he made her think she did. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jesus leaned in to take the cup, nodding in appreciation while she drank from her own. I was never one for sugar. Your mother has crafted an excellent recipe, and even if you cannot perfectly replicate it, like you wish you could, you give a splendid attempt, and honor your mother in holding it to such high esteem. What of your friends, though? When you first opened your door to answer me, you mentioned you had a s you mentioned you had scheduled a get together with them later in the day. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Fluttershy squeaked, slowly curling in on herself like a roly-poly. I panicked and lied. You're not mad, are you? She asked, looking over a raised hoof. Jesus sat placidly, pink teacup in one hand. Are you? No, my dear, I'm not. I'm furious. Jesus then doesn't say just that. Like, she just like struck her with lightning on the spot. <laughs> Yeah. He set down the teacup, sighing as gently as the wind. But it is noble of you to apologize, and I forgive you. What of your friends, though? They sound like interesting ponies. He asked. I guess they're interesting. She mused, looking up at the blooming tree overhead. In one of the branches was a nest, in which two robins were visible. I really like them. Sometimes I wish I could see them more. But lately, I've been really busy taking care of the animals. Have they been giving you trouble lately? I can smite them um, if you wish. <gasps> Do it. <laughs> um, no. Well, I mean, I guess they have. But I'm the only one in Ponyville that knows how to take care of them properly. It's my duty to them. She took a deep, tragically heroic breath and continued observing the birds as they fluttered to and fro amongst the branches. I just haven't had time for my friends. She sniffed, watching in admiration as the mother fed its young, by a vomiting into their mouths. Ugh. Then make time, Jesus said, taking a long sip of tea just after the words left his lips. Fluttershy jerked her attention from the birds, gave it a rousing speech from the confines of her consciousness, and shut up! <laughs> <laughs> and planted it right in front of Jesus like a mother dropping her child off at a new school. What? Was the only word that was able to make it past her mental filters and out of her mouth. And even then it only managed to come out as a whisper. Make time. Jesus repeated, as if that explained everything. Um, uh, oh, how do I do that? I don't think even unicorns can make time, Fluttershy whispered, her eyes drifting down to her tea. What she didn't know was that, technically, unicorns could actually make time. It was an expert-level spell and took many decades to master for even the most experienced unicorns, and by then they were dead. I will leave that for you to meditate on, my dear. So technically, Twilight could do that spell because she's immortal and a unicorn. Well, now she's not a unicorn, she's an alicorn. But she still has the horn to do the magic. Yes. So technically, yes, Flutter, or, well, Twilight could do that. But she's not a unicorn. I mean, I suppose oh. when this fic was released, she was, in fact, a unicorn. Hmm. Eh, but not immortal, so. Yeah, well, technically immortal. 
because like she doesn't die. Well, sure, but if she hadn't turned into an alicorn, she wouldn't be immortal. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't he pa- personally think that alicorns are immortal, but let's just leave it at the door. They just live very long. Yeah, whatever. We haven't seen one die yet. Oh, we're about to. Oh, no, Ross, don't do it. Put the gun down, Ross. Come here, Luna. Oh, God, <laughs> Luna. You just hate her. I don't hate her. But it is fun to hate on her. <laughs> he paused just long enough to consume more of the tea. But if you truly love your friends, then it will become obvious to you soon enough. It merely takes patience of the mind and heart. Oh. Fluttershy shook her head, looking past her teacup and at the ground under her head. I don't think I know what you're talking about. Why can't you just tell me? Some epiphanies must be earned, not given. Is that one of your friends now? He asked, gesturing his teacup to the path leading to Fluttershy's house. Through the blooming, flower-filled trees, a vague lavender shape could be seen bobbing down the path towards the front door. Between the birds chirping, the bees buzzing, and nature making an absolute mess of things, a very faint sound could be heard from the purple blob. It was humming. Oh my... I think that's Twilight. I better go get her. I'll be right back, Mr. Jesus, I promise. She said, sliding off of her pillow. Her obscenely long, curled pink mane and tail bounced as she trotted off, disappearing around the edge of the tree ho- of the house. I hear she has Fumal. tail extensions. Ooh! Calling out Fluttershy. Yeah. A few multicolored birds and various woodland creatures immediately came from the woodwork of the home, rushing to follow their caretaker to greet her guest. All of them left, in fact, save for a small chickadee that looked like he almost, like he most certainly was the runt of the litter, and was probably made fun of in school. Aw, poor chickadee. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that birds had school. I thought that was fish. But um, psh. Oh, was he? This particular chickadee landed on the edge of Jesus' raised teacup mid-sip. He gently lowered it and smiled down at the bird. Hello. Jesus said. The bird tweeted back, and he blinked. It may be beneficial to point out that all animals in Equestria are somewhat intelligent, and while ponies are in fact the second most intelligent, birds are the third. The exact intelligence level of the many species on the planet have been argued over for centuries, since so many of them are capable of arguing that they are the smartest, but unknown to them, the exact smartest of them all has been plainly obvious since the argument began. That would be butterflies. Wait, is that a freaking <laughs> um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference? Is that? I just know that uh, Hitchhikers, they had like, was it the dolphins were the smartest? Yeah. Or is it rats? Um, oh, I can't remember. I think white mice might be the smartest and dolphins the second smartest. Yeah, but I could be wrong. I think I remember that being a thing. <laughs> was that like the actual quote from the book, though? Um, changed a bit, but I think it. Uh, I think it leaves a lot of stuff in to be. Or it, it seems to be. Not the exact quote, but. V- way too similar to not be a reference, I don't think. Okay, this may be a little bit off topic, but we desperately need a good, like, TV show remake or, like, a rendition of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Maybe a Netflix original or something. S- something. So I can enjoy it while looking at it. Ah, yeah. I agree, Lizzie. I agree. Until then, we'll just have to stick with the movie, which was okay at best. <laughs> I mean, there was several another of them TV show. I think actually, maybe I could be wrong. Hmm. I'll look it up. I just know that if it's not there, I'll cut that out. I just know that people don't really like any of these renditions of them. Uh, people, not so good as the book. People, um, the original was actually the what was it? the audio audio drama or whatever hmm. on bbc yeah, radio um, i believe not good enough for me even if people did enjoy it freaking you're the you're such a wuss 
I need visuals, Ross. All right, I'll freaking draw you some visuals. Like, guys, don't you like visuals with your entertainment? Wink, wink. Hey, man, I can't play Tetris and watch a movie, but I can play Tetris and listen to an audiobook. Well, that's because you're just not skilled enough. You're not a person. Anyways. Several of them were fluttering around a yellow and, l and a lavender pony, not at all caring about the invasion of personal space, and caring even less about the conversation going on between them. So the girls and I thought we'd have a picnic today, but we know how busy you've been lately. It wouldn't be the same without you, so I just wanted to come over and make sure you're free ahead of time. Twilight said, smiling the generic smile of one friend happy to see another friend. Fluttershy returned the gesture, but hers was more adorable. The dem demure? Dem demure? Demure. The demure Pegasus looked solemnly at the ground. I'm sorry, Twilight, but I have been rather busy. I took a break for some tea, but... She trailed off, eyes swiveling upwards to meet Twilight's happy, expectant gaze. Perhaps it was the strings of fate being pulled again, or happy coincidence, but something in that momentary glance made Fluttershy think and make a discovery for the ages. Actually, she started, taking a deep breath. I'd love to go on a picnic with you girls. I'll just have to work extra hard later, but if it means spending time with you, it will be worth it. Ah, Hey, Twilight said, a beaming smile crossing her face. After the picnic, we can all help you take care of the animals. That way, you don't have to work as hard. Can we do that for you, Fluttershy? She took a step back from her unicorn friend. Unicorn? <gasps> a smile threatening to overtake her face. That would mean a whole lot to me, Twilight. It shouldn't be too hard. I can go tell Angel to... She stopped mid-turn, eyes widening. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. What? I completely forgot. Twilight, I met a new friend, and I think you'll love him. Fluttershy exclaimed, making an unearthly squeaking sound that would have caused multiple heart attacks had anyone been watching. She grabbed Twilight by her forelegs and puttered her wings as hard as she could, and probably harder than physically possible. With her friend in tow and the wind blowing back her silken mane, she zipped toward her house to the backyard, where she knew Jesus would be cro sitting cross-legged on his pillow, sipping unsugared tea from a pink cup. And he wasn't, naturally. Such is the way of these encounters. Uh, Fluttershy, there's no pony here. Twilight said in her usual bookish tone. She was seconds away from breaking out the emergency spectacles and giving her, giving her creamy friend an impromptu psychological evaluation when she spotted a note left to an, a note left next to a false steaming hot cup of tea. The Pegasus and Unicorn stared blankly at it, and the latter encased it in a single le simple levitation the spell. The latter. The latter. Did I not say that? You said the later. Oops. The Pegasus and Unicorn stared blankly at it, and the latter encased it in a simple levitation spell. Deciding she didn't need to use her emergency spectacles, Twilight read the note aloud. My apologies for leaving without a goodbye. Late for a book club. J. Oh, Squidward, you've been a very good boy this year. Wait, hold on. Oh, where is that asterisk before? <laughs> I don't know. Must find the asterisk, because it explains it. Oh, well, yeah. I'm gonna... Okay. Within part... It wasn't what he looked like that mattered. It was the fact that he was there in the first place, there being Equestria, and generally within part of an improb Im improbability curve. And then, which was cozily positioned right between a universe full of giant space turtles and a universe where everything was made up of black holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so that was Fluttershy Has Tea with Jesus. By Retsamore. Oh, this is... 
just so crazy how it describes everything. Yeah. Oddly enough, the ones with the most interesting descriptions are often the comedy fanfics. Yep. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I guess nothing objectionable did happen. Yeah, nothing objectionable in the slightest. Well, let's see if that trend continues with Rarity has tea with Jesus. Mm. Why would Rarity have tea with Jesus? Let's find out. Chapter 1, Business. Jesus has tea with Rarity by Rats, colon 3. Once upon a time, in a universe which, in a universe nobody paid much attention to, there was a cup of tea, specifically Earl Grey. Ugh, that stuff <gasps> sucks. Ooh, controversial opinion. I don't have tea, so I. I no. no clue if that would be a controversial opinion. I don't. I don't spend time with tea nerds. If Rarity drinks it, you know it must be highbrow. Yeah, but I mean, most highbrow stuff doesn't actually taste good. It's just highbrow, because it's expensive or something. Hey, man, the Earl higher the brow, the more interesting the person. She should be drinking ginseng tea, because that stuff is expensive as all heck. She it doesn't have snowing. that kind of money. Doesn't she, she buy? She gets, like, all those sorts of gems and jewels. Those are for clothes, and occasionally for Spike to eat. Uh, Spike, don't eat them. Why not? That's like his main food source. What? God. Dragons eat gems. And I thought Rarity had expensive taste. It was no longer steaming hot, but one wouldn't expect it to be. After all, it had been sitting out in the open for almost ten minutes. It was only fitting that it did, since being nearly scared to death by a tall stranger knocking on your door tends to leave the mind distracted. Nevertheless, the cup had a long and fruitful life since its birth fifteen minutes before. It didn't try to fight when a light blue aura encased it, levitating the liquid to its sloshy, acidic demise in the bowels of a snow-white unicorn. Soft, orchestral music played in the background, presumably from a gramophone. From a gramophone, but probably not. Grimace phone. <laughs> Grimace Yes, from um the McDonald's, McDonald's. game. It's just Grimace, like, slowly turning a hand-cranked gramophone. <laughs> <laughs> looking at you with his cold, dead eyes. And his four arms of which to steal milkshakes with. Oh, yeah, he had four arms. Yeah, at least originally, but they took them away. I think he also, like, they had, like, two a mean arms. face. That's oh. why he was called the Grimace. Probably. He was originally a villain, but he had no redemption arc, apparently. <laughs> ah, the lore. <laughs> oh, fucking love McDonald's oh. lore. It's insane. Please, Netflix, make a awesome um, overarching story TV show cartoon of, um, of the McDonald's gang, whatever they're called. Ah, uh, that would be awesome. If only they were still around. Yeah. They're, they're, they're around somewhere. So, Mr. Jesus. Mr. J. Mr. J. <laughs> it's a uh, freaking Harley Quinn. Yeah, I know. Rarity muttered, lowering the, the deceased cup of tea back to the table its last words being a melodramatic tinkle as it touched back onto the wood. Ooh, hold on, I'm going to go to the bottom because there's another asterisk and I want to read it in live action. Ooh. This particular cup of tea was actually the 502nd reincarnation of Prince Blue Blood, <laughs> who was unfortunately okay. destined to have his life cut short by rarity several hundred more times over. <laughs> That's curious. <laughs> Um, what the heck? Neat. Looks like this one has a lot more uh, uh, asterisks. Interesting. You came for our... Uh -huh. I'm dreadfully sorry, dear. I'm just all out of sorts today. It isn't a problem at all. Jesus said, resting his hands on his lap. You may take your time to recuperate. That was quite a fall you took. Rarity rubbed her forehead with one hoof at the mention of the incident, and both parties winced, 
one out of sympathy and the other because the spot was still sore and wasn't too fond of being rubbed. Ouch. Mm, I suppose so. Rarity grumbled, resuming her previously perfect posture and poise. I wasn't expecting any visitors today because, as you can see on the sign over there, I'm supposed to be closed. She nodded over at a sign on the front desk, visible only through the door to the kitchen. It blushed when they looked away. Ugh, what? The door blushed? Creepy. So, you mentioned something about a commission before? I'm afraid under normal circumstances I would have to say no, but... This is not a normal circumstance? Jesus finished, eyeing his, tea his own teacup. It would have shrunk back in terror of the evangelical tea con connoisseur, but the allure of his gentle cont count 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 countenance lulled it back into a contented state of just being tea. You are correct, though. I am in need of a new robe, and it is to my understanding that you put a lot of love into your work. At the mention of his robe, a dull, dirty thing that was probably once white, Rarity's eyes jerked uncomfortably. I, uh, yes, I can definitely see why you would be in need of new clothing, but at the moment I'm very busy. You are only visiting Ponyville, I presume? That is correct. Jesus said, slowly reaching for his pink teacup, as if it might get up and flee at any moment. If it's that much of a bother, could I come back later? Ha! <laughs> yes, very well, you may. It would be such a relief if you did, but... Hmm. Rarity said, her eyes growing wide and eyes perk and ears perking up, something her sister would have rudely dubbed her idea face. Rudely? That's adorable. Come on. You know what, Mr. Jesus? If you give me the details on what you would like, I could finish it in less than four days. Robes are fairly simple to make, as you no doubt know. So... It wouldn't... so it wouldn't be much of a problem at all. We can discuss prices later, but right now all that matters is the details. I must no, ask No, no details. Smack. The devil's in them. <laughs> <laughs> I must ask first, though. What made you come to my humble little shop? Surely, for someone like yourself, you must have come quite a long ways to get here. Most foreigners, I believe, would have chosen to go to a more mainstream store. Jesus blinked, tearing his eyes from the cup and forcing them to meet rarities. I've found that I don't prefer mainstream products, and please, just call me Jesus. I am not, as you guessed, from Equestria, but it doesn't take much effort for me to come and go as I please. I believe this is my second visit to your town. It's very charming. So are there any other sequels to this, like with him meeting the other ponies? Sadly, no. Boo, come on. I wish there was. That would have been cool. Huh. But at least they got the two most important ones for him to meet out of the way. Yep. Oh my gosh, could you imagine freaking Rainbow Dash meeting Jesus? Yeah. Or she Applejack. I feel like Applejack jumping. might. Applejack might uh, freaking question him on every little thing. Applejack would probably be my favorite. I wonder why, huh? Yeah, that's curious. Yes. Rarity said, eyes flitting to a window, opened up to let, opened up to let the town chatter and fresh air inside, both of which shoved and pushed on the way in. A podunk, charming little town, she muttered, turning back to her guest. But if I may ask, where are you from, dear? Immaterial. <laughs> he replied curtly. Oh, it certainly sounds exotic. I've never been outside of Equestria myself, but it's a wonder I've never heard of it before. Is it far? Very far, I'm afraid. He said, the teacup impatiently hovering his under his lips. Hmm. Huh. It's a lovely place, I'm sure. But back to business. Indeed. 
Do you want your new robe to be the same? Because while it certainly has its charm, there are plenty of things I could do to make it look absolutely stunning. I can see now a red sash covered in sapphires. Rarity exclaimed, raising her host to the heavens in a fashion that could only be described as overdramatic. The same. I'm not too fond of flashy things. A plain red sash sounds acceptable, though. A classic Jesus. That is so Jesus. <gasps> Ross, idea for a new Disney show. That's so Jesus. Oh yeah? What's it about? Jesus, but he can see into the future. Whoa, that sounds wild. Jesus said, glancing over at the several mannequins that were drowning in gem-encrusted garments. Blinking, he looked down silently and decided that if anything, the visit was worth it for getting the free tea. He took a sip. No gems, no sparkles, no fancy, no flair. Rarity muttered, biting her lower lip in the last few words. I can do that, definitely. I will do it. She placed both hooves on the table, pushing herself up and nearly knocking over her tea set. The soft orchestral music briefly escalated into a crescendo of horns and trumpets. That's nice, Jesus said, flinching as the record screeched to a halt. Oh, darling, I assure you, it will be more than just nice. It will be fabulous. She threw her hooves in the air, letting her body slide back into the chair, and sighed. If Jesus had been paying attention, he might have been able to catch the cartoonish outlines of the various robe designs that were spinning around her head and muttering sweet inspirational nuggets, but he wasn't. He was looking at his slowly disappearing tea. How much will it cost? He asked his teacup. Oh, who's going to play the teacup? Ha 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 ha. the robe? Oh, not much, I assure you. If I get it to you in three days, then it'll be full price. <laughs> Which, for something as simple as what you're requesting, should be about 35 bits. If you need me to hold it for you if you can't make it on time, it will be a 5% raise each four days extra. Oh, my friend Twilight also agreed to help enchant some of my fabrics. I could make it waterproof, tear-proof, tear-proof. I thought it was tear-proof for some reason. <laughs> Or fireproof, if you're willing to give ten extra bits. Would you be interested in that? Rarity asked, resuming her business-like posture. No, thank you. And if I may ask, how are you planning to get work done while at a family reunion? Jesus asked, setting his now-empty cup down. Are you what? She sputtered, blinking furiously and looking from side to side. Whatever do you mean? Jesus casually pointed to an open invitation that was sitting on the table, directly between them and standing on its crease. It says there's one going on in Baltimore this week. Won't you be attending? Oh, that family reunion. Rarity chuckled, whisking the offensive paper with a, away with a burst of blue magic. No, 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 no. I won't be attending this year, not after, after last year. What happened last year? Rarity tittered, leaning to the left. <laughs> it was a disaster. An utter train wreck. I love my family as much as the next pony, but could they be any more embarrassing? She asked, leaning in to look Jesus in the face while he snuck a refill. No! She shouted, slamming a hoof on the table and nearly spilling his newly filled cup. It would be impossible or at least humongously improbable. I love my parents and all of my cousins, and certainly my sister, but they're uncouth, unclean, noisy, rowdy, silly, and her. Absolutely nothing like me. Jesus gently rose a hand in front of his face, eyes glued onto the seething unicorn in front of him, and slowly wiped off a fleck of spittle. Yeah. But you love them anyway? He said. Well, of course I do. They're my family. But you're ashamed of them. He said, taking another sip of the lukewarm tea. 
No, no, of course not. I... She bit her lower lip, meeting the hard gaze of the man sitting across from her. Yes, yes, I am ashamed of them. So very, very much. But they're my family, and I know I should love them, but each and every time I visit, or they visit, and they make it so hard. Listen, woman, you better start loving thy family, or else. No, no. Well, instead of blaming only them for it, look at what you've done. Jesus said, taking another sip. Perhaps you've done nothing wrong, but have you looked at how you've reacted? Did you ever let them know they were being embarrassing? There can be no resolution without communication, unless your family members are all mind readers. But they are! Oh dear, that does sound like a problem. <laughs> he set the teacup down, looking up right into Rarity's disbelieving eyes, and then settling on a small gnat that was buzzing a few feet away. The gnat was more interesting. Ooh, here comes the second asterisk. Ooh. It was also blue blood. <laughs> <laughs> Amusing. I never really thought about it like that. Rarity mumbled. No, no, I suppose I haven't ever talked with them about their behavior in a civilized manner. I guess we haven't been on good terms lately. But you have to understand... I cannot simply waltz up to them and tell them how I want them to live. That would be the worst possible f- You don't have to. It wouldn't be very civilized if you did it that way. Jesus interrupted. How unlike him. Interrupting. Wait a well, minute. That's not Jesus. Take now let's find out who's off. under the mask. It was Prince Blueblood. <gasps> Well, I suppose it wouldn't. Rarity grumbled, sliding back into her seat. But I, well, I suppose I'm just afraid of what they'll think of me. 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 She took a deep breath, a sip of, a quick sip of tea that lasted half a second, and created a noisy, unladylike slurping sound and set her cup down right on top of that gnat. It died instantly. Oh my god, she killed Prince Blueblood. Right in front of Jesus, too. One crystal... One crystal white hoof settled onto the table, and her eyes drifted off into the beams of sunlight that were stabbing in through the window like ineffective assassins. Jesus stared at it, and then at the pink cup in his hand. Slowly, with his eyes strained... With his strained eyes never leaving it, he set the cup down and covered Rarity's hoof with one calloused, muscled hand. Oh, here comes back muscly Jesus. Yeah. If they're your family, truly, they will love you and support you no matter what choices you make in life. They have supported every decision you've made so far, correct? Yes. She whispered, looking down into the infinite pool of tea in front of her. They have. Then love them back. He said, sliding his hand back to his cup's handle in one fluid motion. She blinked and let a, and let loose a tired, thick sigh, like it would solve her problems. Now, about that price. Jesus started. Oh, don't worry, my dear. The price will stay where it is. No exceptions. Now, the door only interrupted, just like Jesus. <laughs> I'll be right there, Rarity automatically shouted, making the chair scream as she shoveled it back and leapt down to the floor. She stepped over to the door, nimble as a mouse, and ignored the skipping record that was standing next to the front window. A tendril of sapphire magic latched itself onto the door handle, who didn't object at all. Oh, that'd be weird if it did. Yeah and slowly cast the door open with a delicacy only found in the magic of an expert seamstress. It was Twilight Sparkle. She keeps interrupting. She just keeps yeah. doing it. Come on, Twy. In all of her purple glory, and levitating beside her was a painted white picnic basket, which was only mostly white, since it was covered in nicks and scratches that gave it a texture which would only be described eloquently as worn. Oh, hello, Twilight. Is that... Yep. Twilight said, presenting her friend the basket as if it were a pot. Twilight said, presenting her friend the basket as if it were a pot of gold. It's your picnic basket. 
I found it in my treehouse just a few minutes ago. I guess it got stuck there during what that twister a couple of days ago. You wouldn't want it back, right? You haven't already bought a new one? No, no, it's perfectly all right, dear. Rarity chuckled, nervously leaning back from the horribly mistreated cargo aid. Uh, I'm sure I can do something to repair it. Twilight's purple aura was replaced by Rarity's blue when the beaten basket was tossed aside to the burn to be burned as fuel later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming by anyways, Twil Oh, Twilight, dear, could you do a favor for me? She asked, her unicorn her unicorn friend paused mid turn and craned her neck to look back. Of course, anything. She answered, the tiniest and most innocent of smiles crawling across her lips. Could you tell the girls that I won't be in Ponyville for the next few days? Only a couple, I promise, and if you could watch the boutique for me, I would be eternally grateful. You have saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. <laughs> what the? Toy Story. Mm. So judgmental. Oh, well, okay. Where are you going? Just a family reunion. Oh, I'm sorry, Twilight, but I have a customer waiting for me in there. Lovely tourist who needs a new robe. Rarity said, turning her white backside to her friend. Twilight just nodded, the words bouncing around in her head like an errant ping pong like errant ping pong balls, taking a few good seconds to collide off of all the right parts and land in their respective slots. Wait, robe? She blurted out. One of the ping pong players in her head doing a little jig to celebrate his victory. <laughs> Why a robe? Rarity stopped just short of slamming the door across her friend's face and looked back. Well, I'm not about to question his kind's cons customs, no matter how weird they are. I've already learned that lesson, but yes, he wears a robe, and I'm replacing it for him. Robe. Robe did not a pony, just like... Twilight trailed off, biting her lower lip. Like with Fluttershy. Is his name Jesus by any chance? She asked, two light bulbs flicking on inside her brain, a little to the left of the ping pong players. <laughs> Rarity flinched at the sight, full well knowing what that eager look on Twilight's face meant. Why, yes, yes it is. She said matter of factly, we were just wrapping up a business here. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if I brought you in to introduce yourself. Come on in. Oh, she keeps doing it. He's going to be gone. Going to be gone, yeah. just like last time. Great. She stepped aside, and perhaps too quickly for Rarity's tastes, Twilight skipped in. Well, I'm only asking because a little while ago, Fluttershy also met, a, met some pony who wasn't a pony, and he wore a robe. And she said his name was Jesus. This can't be a coincidence. Okay, is it still a pony if, um, if it's, is it still some pony if they weren't a pony? Uh, in 2012, yes. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't, but try not to be too hard on him about it. He seems like a nice whatever he is. Rarity said, trailing off into a mumble that was Fluttershy worthy. They crossed through the entrance area, their hooves making only the lightest of sounds even though, up close, one could hear the screams of squashed, minuscule bugs. Oh boy, is this going to be Prince Blueblood again? All were Prince Blueblood. Uh. Oh, Jesus, I hope you don't mind. Rarity called as they made their way into the kitchen and dining area. But I brought one of my f friends. What? What? In a scene that would become not all unfamiliar, not at all unfamiliar to the lavender-colored unicorn, whose eyes were beginning to take on a maddened twitch, the seat where Jesus had ob had obviously been sitting in was empty, and stuck to the side of an empty neon pink cup was a note, held fast by an invisible force. Rarity stared, her mouth agape, as Twilight whisked the note over to the two with with nothing but a stray thought and read the note aloud in a strained, almost creepily controlled voice. Sorry for leaving our business unfinished, Miss Rarity. I will arrive to pick up my robe and pay the allotted due when you have finished with it. It was a pleasure doing business with you, and I thank you for the lovely tea. 
J. P.S. The measurements are written on the back side of this note. Twilight let the note drop, her face now mirroring rarities. It fluttered to the ground and landed ever so gracefully on the tile floor. The Wait. Well, there's one last asterisk thing that said this was Blue Blood 2, but it only got up to three asterisks. I think it's the a the, the, the below part that's also Blue Blood. Oh. <laughs> Oh, my God. So, that was Rarity Has Tea with Jesus. The sequel to Fluttershy Has Tea with Jesus. Ah, uh, that was great. It was. I the do think I preferred Rarity Has Tea with Jesus more. Me too. I think the uh, sequel is definitely uh, the better one, but uh, the comedy in both of them reminds me a lot of uh, six characters in search of a point. I agree. Though it didn't seem to, like, be overbearing at all. Yeah. Which definitely is very go. good. Yeah. Um, it was definitely nothing objectionable happens, unlike with uh, six characters in search of a point. But the Untrue. narration... A gnat perishes. Is that objectionable? It is in the description. But I'm, I'm saying is the gnat perishing uh, object objectionable? The description reads, Rarity has tea with Jesus and absolutely nothing objectionable happens. Untrue. And that perishes. Wait. Oh. See? The description doesn't say that. No. Click on Rarity has tea with Jesus. Go to the... Oh. Okay. There there. it is. Yeah. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. I love that. Anyway. uh, Uh, The narration is really where that uh, style of comedy comes in. Definitely. Um... I'm very glad we read this, finally. As a Christian man myself. Uh, I think Jesus was portrayed uh, awesomely. Because Jesus himself is like total bro mode, you know? Yeah. Yeah. um, Mm -hmm. I I feel like this is the type of thing he would do in Equestria. Probably. I wish we had gotten... um, more of these stories someone complete the six till what would six be that'd be sextology Um, sextology sounds like the study of sex yep but it's not that's um another thing so ross if you had tea with jesus what would you ask him jeez i don't know I mean, I don't drink tea. It's against my religion, but it's all okay. Thing. Um, but but if you if have I had drinks with him, all right. If uh, if we sat down and had a nice cold, like root beer or something together, I would go. Nice weather we're having, isn't it? Because it would be just way too weird. Am I going <laughs> to hell, Jesus? And he says, "Not yet." But keep continuing with the life you're having. And then you have to reflect on what that could mean. Jeez. (laughs) All right. I Uh, think that uh, we're about done here then. Yep. Um, Join us next time on Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour, where we will read. (laughs) No, you're breaking up. Uh oh, I, I can't. Follow us on Twitter at Ross Pit Shark, Wheezy underscore Pop. Bye. Hola, yo soy Dora. You're an idiot. This is unfathomable. You're unfathomable. Boom. I'm cool. I am crushed. I will never return from this.